Greetings, friends and fellow deco enthusiasts. Art Rain here, rangetavern.com. Hope everybody's doing okay under our current COVID-19 quarantine issues we're all dealing with. Um, I was talking to my friend Ted Nichols, a professor over at Salisbury University, who also handles my web design. And uh, we were talking a few weeks ago, and he, he brought up a point about trying to do something that we hadn't done in, well, we've never done this before, but I had done some magazine articles uh, in the past years and years ago, but um, we wanted to try to do something and, and do a talk on some carvers, some makers, some ducks, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I didn't know what to do, but I was like, okay, let me think about it. So I happened to be talking to my friend Ronald Justice over at Shinkatig uh, the other day, and it all came to me sitting there talking with Ronald, let's, let's talk about our friend's cigar. And, so Ronald and I were just having a conversation, and, and Ronald, who was started carving under under cigar when he was about 15 years old in the mid 80s, along with his um, contemporary and friend Mark Daisy, cigar's nephew, um, mentioned to me that that he remembers in about 85 or 86, cigar sold his ruddy ducks for about 60 dollars a piece, and a year later, due to demand and popularity. The price went up to $100 a piece thereabouts that, that cigar was, was getting for his decoys. Well, that got us talking regarding um, the quality and the quantity of bird that cigar was producing. And um, that led us to think about Dolly Fulcher and, and Dolly's great book on cigar. Outstanding reference that uh, he put together. And in that in Dolly's book, it, it's explains the grades of, of the decoys, the, the hunting, the better hunting, the premium, and the um, competition grade decoys. Um, needless to say, the hunting grade was the most pro prolific that he produced. And um, it, it talks about the styles of birds that Cigar did over the years. And, you know, whether it was shore birds or duck decoys, all the styles and the dates and the um, brands and use of so great piece. Well, that that was our conversation. And uh, I said, well, you know what? Let me bring this over to you. This is a hunting bluebill by Cigar dated 1970. And as you can see, I hope, there's no carving back here. Just flat cutting and, and paint. And this was obviously painted by, with oils in 1970. And uh, it's just a basic hunting bird does have some cone scratching on the back and on the sides. So I don't know if that was pretty standard of all of them or if that would be considered maybe a, a better hunting grade. But I think this is just a, the hunting grade, the more common bird that he did. The next grade above the hunting grades were his premium. Here's a black duck from the mid 80s that, that Cigar did. Hopefully you can see the difference, the details, the wing carvings. The resized raised wings, slightly raised wings. The paint, much more paint. This one's never rigged, and it's uh, you know, but a lot more, a lot more carving, and and painting, better painting. That's that was his premium grade, and the top grade that he did his competition birds when he was entering contest. This is a black duck from 1971 that he did. And you can see, I hope, the details, the primaries. All of these feathers are carved out, the tail feathers. The primaries, there's like five or six primaries cut out. And the paint, the quality. Even underneath the bill, it's carved. And painted. Again, this is the competition grade. So, needless to say, he didn't make as many of these birds because of um, the competitions. He would go out everywhere from the War Museum to up and down the East Coast to out west, Michigan. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly all the shows he went to, but that was his competition grade bird. So as we continued to talk, Ronald and I, you know, talking about the birds like I just kind of tried to share with you a little bit, uh, we got reminiscent about some of the stories that Cigar used to 
tell us, and you know, he loved to tell stories. Everybody knows, and everybody has heard a lot of them. The, 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 the word has been out, and the, the lore has been rich uh, in books such as Marsh Tales. That's a great reference with a good take on cigar. But it was all, we, we got talking about his trapping and his dear friend, Newman Merritt. This was his lifelong friend at Cigar and his buddy Newman, who, who passed away just a couple of years before Cigar did. And uh, I was sitting in his shed, and if you notice, Cigar had a little smirk on his face. That's probably because he called me Picture Man. He probably just said, come on, Picture Man, take your picture. He would always call me Picture Man, which he, people that know him knew that he had nicknames for a lot of folks. And uh, so I guess Picture Man wasn't too bad, but, uh, and I did. I took a lot of pictures of him and uh, his decoys, and him and I with his decoys. And uh, anyway, but we talked about his trapping and he loved to tell stories that, you know, him over on Assateague across the, across the bay there, the little sound bay and uh, going over onto Assateague Island and, and trapping, whether it was you know, you know, trapping ducks, uh, foxes, raccoons, whatever, you know, he needed to trap for whatever reason. Um, and Ronald reminded me with that story that we'd gone out to the Great Lakes decoy show out in Westlake, Ohio, and I think this was 2009. Might have been 10, but I think it was 2009. And Ron and I were sitting in our room at the show there in Westlake, Ohio, and uh, an elderly gentleman came in and, you know, looking around the room, looking at our decoys and, you know, observing, talk, small talk, and he starts talking about Shinkatig, because he saw that Ronald was from Shinkatig, and he saw some of Ronald's birds, he saw some cigar birds, and he got talking, he says, um, I knew of Cigar Daisy, I'm like, oh yeah, really great. Yeah, how'd you know him? Well, I was a retired. I'm a retired federal game warden, and we're like, oh gosh, this should be rich. And uh, he proceeded to tell us that he had never met Cigar, but I guess the 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 federal game wardens had a top ten warning list, and Cigar had made that list. And actually, he went on to say that. Cigar had at one point become their number one um, most wanted. Well, we laughed and we had cackled over that and told him, said, boy, Cigar would love to hear that. Can't wait till we get back to tell Cigar that. Well, sure enough, after all of that, we get back, we go sit down with Cigar. You've never seen a man smile so wide when we told him that story that he made number one. He was like, finally, I was number one at something. <laughs> he, we had a big time with that. And uh, Cigar then told us, he said, you know, he said, it never did catch me. He said, I only, only got caught one time. And I, I, if I remember, sir, from right, it was when he was gunning. They took him to Accomack County uh, Courthouse on a Friday night or a weekend. I forget exactly what, but the judge made him, there made him pay $50 to, to release him. And so that was the only time Cigar ever got caught for anything, but he never got caught trapping. And... Uh, he was real proud of that. He said, they never did catch me, boys. They never did catch me. And uh, he um, went on to, to say that uh, I, the state or the federal government, um, game war, DNR, hired him to do trapping, legal trapping. And this probably was in maybe the late 60s, 70s, I'm assuming, maybe the 80s, but 70s probably over on Assateague, I mean, to trap for them, you know, or the overpopulation and the nuisance of Fox or whatever it was. But Fox was one thing. I remember him saying that they paid him to do trapping because it sounds like he was he was one of the best. Everybody take care. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this. Stay safe, my friends. Happy decoy hunting.